the room. They brought me a box divided up into little sections with oh tissue paper. God. The cockroaches were there, lined up for me to cast. He added, I think they're actually called one. Hi, Lee. J-Rock hands come back to you too. What is happening in 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 with the millions? <laughs> and millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world. That's right, baby, J-Rock is here. We're about to check out this video from a channel called Looper. And it's gross things actors had to actually do to get a job. You know, for any of you out there aspiring to get into Hollywood, this might be a very good video to watch, just so you know what you could possibly expect to have to do. You know, if you have a fear of certain animals, insects, uh, you may have to end up holding that particular animal, allowing said insect to crawl, maybe multiple of them. Hell, you might even have to eat one or put one in your mouth just to get a job. So, you see all these posts about, oh, would you do this for $100 million? Well, we're about to see, all right? Uh, so come on, let's waste no time, baby. Let's check this out. What's the grossest thing that an actor had to do to nail a performance? Well, one female actress had to actually put a live bird in her mouth. Keep watching to find out who it was. There has long been talk of Halle Berry going to extraordinary lengths to get into character as Vivian alongside Samuel L. Jackson in Jungle Fever, Spike Lee's 1991 exploration of romance and race relations. Jackson portrayed the scene-stealing, drug-addled brother of Wesley Snipes' lead character named Gator while Berry was Gator's hard scrabble main squeeze. Jungle Fever features a memorable scene that called for Jackson and Berry to bicker back and forth when Gator wants some alone time with his brother. For Barry, who came from the world of modeling, it was an unexpected role and one she had worked hard to lend. To prepare for the part, she spent several weeks not bathing, with most reports claiming that she went unwashed for two weeks. Some even speculated that her avoidance of soap and water went as long as two months. Damn. In 2012, the Oscar winner told talk show host Wendy Williams that the method tale was no exaggeration, claiming to have avoided bathing for about 10 days. She said, It's true. Ask Sam Jackson. He had to get a whiff of it constantly. Barry elaborated in a 2016 interview, saying, Spike Lee wanted me to read for a different role, and I read that part fine enough, but then I said to Spike, you know, I really am eyeing this Krakow role. It was an amazing way to start my career. Yes, the rumors are true. Nicolas Cage ate cockroaches. Cast in the role of Peter Loaf, a literary agent suffering from paranoid delusions in the 1988 horror comedy Vampire's Kiss, dead. Cage was a fast-rising Hollywood star at the time. He was known for taking daring risks and making, let's call them, unique choices in his mannerisms. In the years since, the box office flop has become a cult hit, as well as a dependable Halloween watch. KISS also offers viewers the chance to watch the actor do some off-the-wall things, from falling downstairs to tearing a room apart to screaming the alphabet in its entirety, jumping on desks, chasing pigeons, and pouring hot yogurt on his toes. The odd performance has since fed multiple memes and is considered a landmark in the cinematic evolution of Cage, perhaps the most interesting actor of his generation. To convincingly portray Loeb's spiraling descent into insanity, Cage made a habit of offering to do more than what was being asked of him, for one scene in particular. Though the script only called for Loeb's to slurp down a raw egg, Cage felt more was needed. Speaking to The Ringer in 2019 about the infamous movie moment, Bierman recalled that day on set. He shared, Nicolas Cage said to me, you The thing I hate most in the world are cockroaches, so let me eat a cockroach. I thought, this is terrific. I sent my prop people down into the boiler room. They brought me a box <laughs> divided up into little sections oh with tissue paper. God. The cockroaches were there, lined up for me to cast. He added, I think they're actually called water bugs. They're bigger than cockroaches. I couldn't think of a more horrible job if I wanted to. Major spoilers for the 2014 murder mystery thriller Gone Girl. If you've seen the film, you'll know the gruesome final act that Rosamund Pike oh must perform as Amy Dunn, jilted lover and missing person. After attempting to escape her apparently abusive and unfaithful husband Nick, played by Ben Affleck, Amy hides out with another formerly abusive ex-boyfriend, Desi. 
she makes the world believe she has disappeared while knowingly implicating Nick in the process. The film follows Nick's attempts to clear his name and find his wife, with Amy being revealed as a ruthless, cunning woman out to destroy her husband's life. In the film's climax, Amy decides to return to Nick and is forced to murder Desi and frame him for her disappearance so she and her husband can live happily ever after. Actress Rosamund Pike was required to believably slice the throat of actor Neil Patrick Harris, who played Desi. It was a key scene that she wanted to be prepared for, so she did what any reasonable person would. She got a hold of some pig carcasses and pretended to murder them. The actress told Glider in 2016, If you're going to do something like that, you have to do it with a certain degree of accuracy. I had no idea how much force you needed to slice someone's throat. I actually went to a butcher and asked them if they wouldn't mind me just using a box cutter on a pig carcass, just to understand what it would be like. Matt Damon was nothing if not dedicated when he took on the role of Max DaCosta a blue-collar worker in a dystopian future version of Los Angeles in the 2013 film Elysium. Yeah, the I movie was a much-anticipated follow-up to director Neil Blomkamp's indie hit District 9, a science fiction drama featuring overt commentary on South African apartheid. With Elysium, Blomkamp took the formula that worked so well before. This included its social commentary and dialed it up a notch, adding a bigger budget, bigger sets, and bigger stars like Damon and Jodie Foster. But that expanded FX budget didn't mean the entire movie would be filmed on green screen. So to portray Los Angeles in a future where pollution, overpopulation, and climate change had ravaged the landscape, producers used a garbage dump in Mexico City as a stand-in. At San Diego Comic-Con in 2012, Damon spoke to the curious crowd and told them about filming the sci-fi epic and how the landfill location was mostly fecal matter. The helicopters would come through and we'd be black with dust. Neil would come over with his mask and said, I promise you, the photography looks great. F Filming for the 2015 Alejandro Inarritu wilderness oh, epic The Revenant ah. was notoriously difficult. The director himself called the production's harsh conditions a nightmare. Filmed on location in the Canadian Rockies, the crew dealt with bitterly cold temperatures that made production difficult, and Inaritu was heavily criticized for pushing his cast and crew too hard under harsh conditions in a shoot that went at least five months over schedule. Some crew members reportedly ranked it among the worst experiences of their career. One cast that. member who didn't complain, however, was lead Leonardo DiCaprio. To get into character and deliver his gut-wrenching performance, DiCaprio, known for going above and beyond for his films, went to extreme lengths that included sleeping in animal carcasses and eating raw bison liver. He shared in a 2015 interview, whether it's going in and out of frozen rivers or sleeping in animal carcasses or what I ate on set, I was enduring freezing cold and possible hypothermia constantly. I certainly don't eat raw bison liver on a regular basis. When you see the movie, you'll see my reaction to it because Alejandro kept it in. It says it all. It was an instinctive reaction. For the effort, Inaritu would become just the third director to win back-to-back -back Academy Awards for Best Director, while DiCaprio would take home his first Best Actor trophy. Based on the smash hit comic book by Todd McFarlane, 1997 Spawn is infamously remembered today for its over-the-top, sometimes silly tone. But the cast was certainly taking it seriously. John Leguizamo's character, for instance, appears as a nauseating, bulbous street punk in bizarre facial makeup, whose disgust for humans is rivaled only by an appetite for oh, all things real? horrifying. In one scene, the character eats a pizza covered with live maggots. Like some other instances above, this immediately led to a debate among viewers about how real the scene actually was. Eventually, the conversation got so loud that the actor himself had to respond. He tweeted in 2014, Yes, I did eat maggots in Spawn, but I only swallowed a few. He followed it up by warning his fans not to try it at home. He said, Haha, don't go there. Shia LaBeouf has earned the reputation of a Hollywood oh eccentric, God. and in the right hands, this can sometimes translate to powerful on-screen work. This was the case when his talents were tested in David Ayer's acclaimed 2014 World War II picture, Fury. Along with much of the cast, LaBeouf took part in several weeks of military boot camp alongside a group of Navy SEALs. 
Star Brad Pitt said, it was set up to break to us that? down, to keep us cold, Me? to keep us exhausted, to make us miserable, to keep us wet, make us eat cold food. But LaBeouf, who played a tank driver in the film, took his method performance one step further, going so far as to having one of his teeth removed. He explained on Jimmy Kimmel Live that it wasn't as easy as one might think, saying, it's not like you can go to some dentist and go in there like, hey, I want to get this tooth taken out. They were like, you want to do what? That doesn't make any medical sense at all. But ultimately, LaBeouf insists that he got it done because he wanted to add some depth to the character. He added, I found a guy in Reseda next to a radio shack. He didn't ask too many questions. To further method this madness, Fury co-star Logan Lerman told an interviewer that the scar on LaBeouf's cheek in the film was not only real, but self-inflicted. Lerman explained, they were putting cuts on Shia and I said, yeah, yeah, it looks good. And Shia was like, no, it doesn't look real. So he walks out into the hallway and says, hey man, want to see something fun? Check this out. And he takes out a knife and cuts his face. For the whole movie, he kept opening these cuts on his face. That's all real. Among the most intensely dedicated actors in Hollywood today, Christian okay, Bale yeah, always finds it. a way to stand out. He notoriously lost 60 pounds for the 2004 flick The Machinist, then immediately bulked up to play Batman. For the Werner Herzog Vietnam War drama, Rescue Dawn, Bale combined these methods and more. Taking on the role of real-life war hero and U.S. Navy pilot Dieter Dengler, Bale committed himself fully to embodying the part of the long-suffering hostage of the Patet Lao. Tortured and starved, the movie portrays Dengler's struggle to endure his captivity, staying alive for his ultimate rescue by American forces. Bale once again put his heart and soul into a part, challenging himself both physically and mentally during the shoot. These adversities included wrestling a real snake, losing more than 60 pounds, and being physically abused as part of several torture scenes. But perhaps the most nauseating, Bale ate live maggots in an attempt to portray the depths of desperation his real-life character had reached during imprisonment. Bro, he said I in a 2007 interview, Oh yeah, those were real maggots. They were very real. I didn't mind eating the maggots. Asked what he wouldn't do, the actor remarked that being set ablaze is something that crosses the line. Look, I've done other things where people have to be set on fire and jump three stories. I'm not doing that. I've got limits. What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. Veteran actor Tony Todd has had multiple iconic supporting roles over the years oh in movies God, like dude. Platoon and Real. Night of the Living Dead, but it's his part as the titular horror villain in the 1992 Man. film Candyman that has become his calling card. His booming voice terrified moviegoers in multiple films and has haunted dreams for nearly 30 years. You're mine now. But it was more than Todd's imposing deep voice, towering physical presence, and razor-sharp hook that scared viewers. The franchise has depicted swarms of bees crawling out of him, from his sleeves, his chest, and even his mouth. And keep in mind that in the early 90s, CGI was a costly, rarely utilized option for horror films. As a result, swarms of real bees were used on set, and actor Tony Todd endured it all, receiving more than 20 bee stings during the shoot. But don't feel too bad for the thespian. He made a smart deal with the film's producers that ended up putting some good money in his pocket, alongside all that calamine lotion. He told Entertainment Weekly while looking back on the film in 2019, I negotiated a bonus of $1,000 for every sting during the B scene, and I got stung 23 times. Everything that's worth making has to involve some sort of pain. Once I realized it was an important part of who Candyman was, I embraced it. It was like putting on a beautiful coat. The 2012 movie everything. The Paperboy didn't make many waves with critics or at the box office, but at the time of its release, the film was nonetheless discussed, albeit for all the wrong reasons. Set in 1969, Paperboy tells the tale of a reporter who goes back to his childhood hometown to prove the innocence of a death row inmate found guilty of murdering the local sheriff. Matthew McConaughey plays the intrepid reporter, but a tawdry secondary story involves the film's other two leads. Zac Efron plays his younger brother Jack, and Nicole Kidman plays an out-of-towner named Charlotte Hess, girlfriend of the accused. One scene in the film has Efron's Jack Ward getting badly injured and stung by a group of jellyfish, 
as pop culture of the last few decades would have you believe, there is yeah. only one way to overcome such pain, and that's by having someone give you an impromptu golden shower. Pee According to the yeah. Cleveland Clinic, this is indeed just a myth, so please <laughs> don't pee on friends and family without first consulting a doctor. For the scene in question, Kidman actually urinated on Zac Efron. Daniel said in a 2012 interview, We just went for it and never thought twice about it because it made sense for the film. It was what it was. As the flick made its way through post-production, Daniels began getting doubts. But Oscar winner Kidman encouraged him to stick by his instincts. Daniels recalled, I think that I became more nervous about it in the edit room and I thought, I'm not actually going to show this, right? Is it vulgar? And I called Nicole and said, I don't know. And she said, Lee? You made me pee on Zac Efron. If you don't put it in the movie, you need to man up. And I was like, all right. Joaquin Phoenix is known for his eccentric ways, throwing himself into films like Joker and I'm Still Here. For Paul Thomas Anderson's 2012 film that flirted with the origins of Scientology and the struggle between faith and free will, however, Phoenix may have gone to his most extreme. Portraying Freddie Quell, a veteran of the Second World War suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, Phoenix got very method. So much so that he even wired parts of his jaw shut so he could achieve the character's awkward speech patterns. It's a move somewhat reminiscent of how method hero Marlon Brando used cotton balls to land the role of Don Corleone, but it also made for a wholly unique performance in The Master, one that landed Phoenix an Oscar nomination. Phoenix explained the story in 2014, saying, My dad sometimes would talk out of the side. He'd clench down one side of his mouth, and I just thought it represented tension in this way. Somebody that's just blocked and tight. So I actually went to my dentist, and I had them fasten these metal brackets to my teeth on the top and the bottom, and then wrapped rubber bands around it to force my jaw shut on one side. Phoenix went on to explain, after a couple weeks, the bands, they weren't really strong enough to kind of hold it, so I ended up getting rid of the rubber bands, and I still had these metal brackets in, and so it made me constantly aware of my cheek. You know, they had these pointy tips, so they'd tear up the cheek a little bit. Tim Burton's Batman Returns had some unsettling moments, many of them belonging to Danny DeVito's Penguin. His grotesque appearance and disgusting eating habits made it a bit unpleasant if you were attempting to chow down on a tub of popcorn. But it was the eating habits of the other villain that yeah. makes this list. Yeah, in particular, an infamous scene involving a little birdie. During the scene in question, the villainous Catwoman puts a live bird in her mouth as a way of threatening DeVito's Penguin. Actress Michelle Pfeiffer, who had beat out the likes of Sean Young and Madonna for the in-demand part, was determined to do more than simply toss a rubber prop into her mouth and call it a day. Instead, the actress wanted the full effect, particularly the bird fleeing the coop when she opened her mouth, and actually put a real live bird in her mouth for the scene. Nice birdie. These days, after special effects and CG have spent decades rendering audiences accustomed to cinematic trickery, you might not appreciate the lengths Pfeiffer went to for the scene unless you know the backstory. Burton told The Hollywood Reporter in 2017, I don't think I've ever been so impressed. She had a live bird in her mouth while the camera was rolling. It was four or five seconds, and then she let it fly out. It was before CG, it was before digital. It was so quick, it seems like it was an effect. Pfeiffer said of the scene, I look back and say, what was I thinking? I could have gotten a disease or something from having a live bird in my mouth. It seemed fine at the time. I don't think the bird was drugged or anything. We did that scene in one take. You had to Check out one of our newest twice? videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Well, J Rock says this. For those of you out there aspiring to be into Hollywood, just know this. Anything that you got to eat, put in your mouth, let crawl on you, get it in your contract, you want extra money for that. If it involves eating maggots, I want a thousand per maggot. If I got to get stung by bees, wasps, or something else, 10,000 a sting. If I got to let something crawl on me, 500 per bug. And we actually going to sit down and I'm going to count every single bug that crawled on me. 
Every last one of these things I eat, I'm counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a hundred thousand. One, two, three. And some stuff, I'm just like, you know what? I'm not eating this. Nicholas Cage ate a, a a live cockroach. Bruh. Seriously? And and here's the thing. Nobody made him do it. He offered to do it. Like, bruh. What the hell is wrong with you? Like, you couldn't pretend to be drinking, like, rat piss or something? You got to eat a cockroach? And from what I... I don't think the movie... Man. I don't even remember the movie. I ain't watching it. I want to see that. Michelle Pfeiffer putting a, a bird in her mouth. That seems like child's play compared to everything else everybody was doing. My God. Is it that serious? The least, the least worst one, I should say, was Halle Berry not taking a bath for a few weeks. I mean, you just go to the bathroom and, you know, a good 20, 30 minutes shower, you good. But, man, you hear the damn maggot? Bruh, do you understand what... Anyway. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to leave that there. You know, if y'all aspiring, I mean, it's just basically how far would you go to live your dream? You know, I guess that's what it's all boils down to, you know. Some people eat bugs, you know, I guess, whatever. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio, he'll swim in freezing hypothermic water and eat eat bison liver. And I got to go back and watch that movie. Post your comments down below and let J-Rock know which thought of his reaction to this video no rhyme intended on that line and if you enjoyed the great one's reaction hit that like button subscribe and share be sure to hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified thank you for joining j rock stay tuned for my next video mamba gg and wakanda forever if you smell what J-Rock is cooking.